We're going to be multiplying and dividing decimals and actually doing some long division with decimals. This is Lesson 9b. And if you've missed or skipped previous videos and you become lost or confused, just click the description for those previous videos to help you out. To multiply decimals, we count the amount of decimal places, the hops, in the equation, and that's how many decimal places or hops will be in the answer, the product. We just multiply as usual. So in this one, in the actual equation, we've got four hops. We've got three here and one here, so there's going to be four hops in the product. And then we know where to put the decimal point. To multiply money, we round the answer to the nearest cent place. So if we're multiplying an amount of money by a decimal, like maybe it's $2.35 for every 7 tenths of a pound of apples or something like that, we can multiply and count the hops. When we put the three hops into the product, we know money only has two decimal places on this side of the decimal point. So this 5 is going to tell the 4 to round up to a 5, and instead of this for our answer, because you can't have that with money, we get $1.65. See? So you can just round up or round down when it's money. When we divide decimals, we can write the problem in long division form. That'll really help us, because the decimal point is going to go straight up from where it is in the dividend right up into the quotient right there. Okay, so remember the dividend is on the inside, the divisor is on the outside, and the quotient's the answer. So if it's written like this, we can rewrite it into long division form. This is the number being divided, so that goes on the inside, that's the dividend. We put the decimal point in the quotient directly above the decimal point that's in the dividend. We just divide with long division just like we would normally. The only difference is we're going to have a decimal point going straight up there. Okay. When the divisor, the guy on the outside, when the divisor has a decimal point, we move it to the right and move the dividend's decimal the same amount of places. So if both of these have a decimal, we move the decimal point from the divisor back so that it's a whole number, but however many hops we move it back, that's how many we have to move it back in the dividend. So instead of the decimal point going straight up here, it's going to go up here, see? And then we just do long division as we normally would. So here's the same numbers as this one. The only difference is, if I can get back far enough, the only difference is the divisor right here had a decimal point, so we had to move it back, see? So now the decimal point's back here behind the 3. And in this one, it was 2 as a whole number, so we didn't have to move the decimal point, and it went straight up in here between the 7 and the 3, see? So when you see a decimal point in the divisor, move it back however many hops you need to get it so that it's a whole number, but then you've got to move the decimal point in the dividend the same amount of hops, okay? And then that's where the decimal point will go in the quotient, all right? So I'll show you again. So this one, we had a 0.14. We had 14 hundredths. So now we need to move it back two hops. That means we have to move it back in 37.8, 37 and 8 tenths, two hops. One, two. That leaves an empty space here, and we can add a zero as a placeholder. And then we just do our division as we would normally do long division. And instead of going up here, our decimal point is going to go up here into the quotient behind that zero. See? Here we have money, and we can add zeros to keep dividing. So if we have 6 as our divisor and we have a dollar of amount of $27.51, we can divide, and you just do it like you do regular division, and our decimal point is going to go straight up here because he doesn't have one, so it's just going to go straight up. When we get down to a point where we're dropping this 1 down so that we have a 51 because 35 minus 30 is 5, and it's the 1's turn to come down, and we see how many times can 6 fit into 51? Well, 6 times 8 is 48, so that's really close. We put the 8 above the 1. We do our subtraction and get a 3. So now we have a remainder of 3. So if we add a 0, because we can keep adding as many zeros as we want on this side of the decimal place, remember? On the, this side of the decimal point. Now we turn it into a 30, which 6 can go into evenly. And we put a 5 up here. And now we can round it to the nearest cent. 
So this $4.58 with this 5 back here that is causing a problem because money doesn't have three digits like this. The 5 tells the 8 to round up to a 9, and now it is correct. It's $4.59, okay? But it's not exact, is it? It's approximate because we rounded, all right? If we want to divide, and we've got a lot of decimal places for the dividend and the divisor, what we do is we move it back. This is going to go back one, two, three, four hops. That means this one has to go back four hops. Yeah, doesn't matter. However many hops this one goes back to be a whole number, that's what this one needs. So the 60 and 45 hundredths, the 60.45, we have to go back one, two, three, four. We had to add two zeros. And then the decimal point is going to go up here in our quotient because we moved it back four. See? We end up with this as our equation. We end up with five as a whole number as our divisor. And then we end up with this as a whole number as our divisor because we moved the decimal place, the decimal point all the way back. See? Now I'm going to show you something else. Now if the divisor has a decimal and the dividend doesn't, and we need to move it back, one, two, and this one doesn't even have a decimal point, we can make a decimal point behind it. We can go back one, two, and add the zeros. So now we've got two going into 2400, don't we? See? So if the, the, the dividend doesn't have a decimal to move back, give it one and add as many zeros as you need that the divisor needed to go back. See? All right? Now, in the skill fo focus, it's going to tell you to place the decimal point into the product and add zeros if needed. So as we said before in the beginning of the video, you just count the hops. So if this is the equation, how many hops do we have? We've got one, two, three. So we start back here and we go one, two, three. It would go here. See? For this one, how many hops do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five hops. So we'd start here and count. One, two, three, four, five. So it would go right there. See? However many hops are in the equation, that's what it's going to be in the product. For this one, and you have examples like this in the book, we've got one, two, three hops, four hops, five hops, but we've only got four digits here. If we start here and we go one, two, three, let me do it for real here, one, two, three, four, five, that's putting the decimal point way over here, but we have a hop with nothing there, so we just put a zero there as a placeholder, okay? So it's going to tell you to do that. It's going to say add zeros if you need to, all right? Now we can multiply by a power of 10, like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, million, whatever, by adding zeros onto the answer, okay? So if you have 24 times 10, because there's one zero here, we just do 24 times 1 with a zero, 240. 24 times 100, we do 24 times 1, and there's two zeros, so we add two zeros to 24 times 1, see? To get 2,400. When we do it times 1,000, there's three zeros, so we add three zeros. So basically what you're doing is 24 times 1, and then adding that number of zeros, see? And we can also do it for other numbers. It doesn't have to just be a 10. I know in the book it tells you powers of 10, but it also works for other numbers as long as these are all zeros, okay? So if we have 24 times 2, well, 24 times 2 is 48. So 24 times 20, there's one zero here. We add a zero to the back end of 48, see? 24 times 200, we add two zeros. 24 times 2,000, we add three zeros. We can even do 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25, right? Well, 5 times 5,000 is 5 times 5 with three zeros. It's 25,000. See? So that can help you go quicker. Anything that will help you save seconds 
on doing the test will give you more time for other problems, right? So now you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 115. And it tells you to do 7 through 18 on paper with paper and pencil, and then 19 through 24 on a calculator. And my advice is do this because it'll give you practice with pencil and paper so that when you don't have a calculator and you're taking the GED test, you have more practice doing these problems the way you need to do them, okay? Don't keep relying on your calculator because there are problems that don't allow a calculator on the test and you want practice for those, all right? If you feel like her and you need more practice, I'm going to have links to my decimal playlist. There's videos in my decimal playlist that can help you with multiplying and dividing, adding and subtracting. And there's going to be these grade four and, uh, I'm sorry, grade five and grade six videos to help you and links to the previous videos where we talked about fractions and decimals, okay? So you should be okay. If this is really, really confusing, watch the video again, all right? Or watch the ones in the link that are linked in the description. But I hope you do well in the skill focus. And if you do, I'll see you next video. If you have trouble, keep practicing before you move on. All right? But you can do this. I'll see you next time. Bye.